Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah, if you're new here, and welcome to the young adult shelves. Uh, you don't get to see these very often in my videos. However, we got some golden hour sunlight happening, so we are filming in this location today. So you can see my TBR up here, what I want to read, and my young adult favorites from middle school and high school. In today's video, I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag for this year. I did one of these last year and I had a lot of fun talking about my goals, doing a mid-year check-in, and I definitely wanted to do it again this year. There are 14 questions, so let us get into it and talk about some books and how my reading year has gone thus far. The first question is the best book so far that you've read this year, and obviously this is a hard question to answer for any avid reader, but I'm actually going to go with like a slightly different response than I did last year. I'm going to pick my favorite nonfiction that I've read this year, and of course I'm going to give three answers because I can't just pick one. The first two are stamped from the beginning, and they were her property. These are both really, really great. Um, deep dives into the history of racism and in one instance the history of white women slave owners um, in US history and this is just part of my anti-racist journey in the non-fiction sphere that's hard to say um, and I thought these were both really excellent excellently written researched and really thought-provoking works and then the other nonfiction I have to recommend uh, in a different realm was The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. I thought this was so lighthearted and fun and not what I was expecting at all from this book. And it really kind of warmed my heart. So kind of two sides of the nonfiction realm. But I just wanted to highlight those really great five star reads so far. The second question is the best sequel you've read this year and I have to say I have to say Jade War and Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee which is book two and three in the Greenbone Saga and this series as a whole has one of the best overarching character arcs, one of the best like story progressions from book one to book three. It's truly like the execution of this series, I think is some of the best I've ever read, period, point blank. Um, and so these are obviously the best sequels. This is an urban fantasy, um, Asian inspired gang war story between these two gangs that control magical jade that enhances your physical fighting prowess and your natural abilities. Uh, and it's superb. It's stupendous. It's amazing. And I think this is a, such a good series. So definitely the best sequels I've read. The third question is uh, new releases that you haven't gotten to yet, but you still want to. I have two answers for this. The first is Kaiki. Kaiki. -e. Uh, this is a retelling of an Indian mythological character who is traditionally seen as a villainess. Um, and so this is kind of her story retold from her perspective. And I love like villain stories um, and I love kind of retellings in this sphere and I'm just dying to get my hands on it. I'm waiting desperately for the library hold to come in on this one. And the other new release that I really, really want to get to is The Bone Orchard. This is like a murder mystery where like the emperor or like the ruler of the land is murdered but before he dies he's able to write a letter to his concubine and say hey someone killed me can you solve my murder for me and so this is from the perspective of the ruler's mistress as she's trying to solve his murder it just sounded really good and i'm just really intrigued by this um, and i cannot wait to get my hands on it next question is the most anticipated releases you have for the second half of the year and I'm a lucky duck and all, well, m most of my favorite authors are coming out with a new book in the second half of 2022 so I feel so blessed. <laughs> I am so excited. The first one we're going to talk about Sylvia Marina Garcia's new book which is The Daughter of Dr. Moreau which is a historical science fiction novel about a woman who is the daughter 
of a mad scientist. And that's all I know about it, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. This is out in July. The next book is Brandon Sanderson's new book, which is The Lost Metal, book four in his Mistborn Era 2 series. This is following Wax and Wayne in their fourth and final installment, and this has been many years coming. It's been at least three or four since the last installment, and this is a western style fantasy, which is a lot of fun. Sarah Gailey has a horror book coming out in July that's called Just Like Home, and I know it's a horror novel. It's about a woman returning home. I don't really need to know more about that, but I love Sarah Gailey, and so the fact that they wrote a horror novel, I'm like dying to get my hands on it out in July. Then we have A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers, which is book two in the Monk and Robot novella series. This is a cozy sci-fi series about a non-binary tea monk and their robot companion. I love them and I, again, July, get here faster. <laughs> Uh, we also have N.K. Jemison's new book, which isn't out until November. This is The City We Became Two, which is called The World We Make. And I'm a little skeptical about this one. I'm excited because I love N.K. Jemison and I will read everything that she comes out with. Um, but this book is not necessarily what I want from her next. <laughs> but that's okay. Like, she's gonna write what she's gonna write and I'm gonna read it no matter what. You know what I mean? And the the last book I have to talk about is R.F. Kuang has a new book. So R.F. Kuang wrote the Poppy War trilogy and I read the first book in that trilogy and I could recognize her skill as a writer and her ability to craft excellent worlds and excellent characters. But the Poppy War trilogy, I just, it's so dark and violent. It kind of turned me off. So I was like waiting for R.F. Kuang to come out with something else. Um, and she did. She's coming out with this book called Babel, which is a dark academia history fantasy story that has to do with how translation work is used in like colonization and how radical translations can be. And she's kind of taking that idea and make crafting like a fantasy story out of it. I have no idea, but this sounds incredible and I know it's gonna be a favorite. Okay, in the next one we have to talk about my biggest disappointment. And I don't really wanna talk about it, but <laughs> I'm gonna put Mooncakes on here, which is a young adult graphic novel um, featuring a deaf protagonist and a non-binary werewolf. Uh, and she's a deaf witch and a non-binary werewolf and they have a little romance and I was just kind of disappointed with the lack of depth in this story. I was, I don't know, hoping for more from the world building and the characters were cute but they like immediately got together and we just had to kind of assume that they had a past relationship and that was supposed to carry their current on-page relationship. So I don't know, it just I didn't hate this. I ended up giving like a 2.53 out of five stars, but I think this was the most disappointing because I had such high hopes for this type of a uh, cute fantasy story and it just kind of fell flat for me. So moving on from that, um, we're talking about my biggest surprise. I have two for this. Um, we have Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes, which is a sci-fi thriller slash horror novel. And I won't spoil it because it is a horror thriller, so it's best to go in the these types of books blind, but I was kind of blown away by what this book did. Um, I will say the horror elements are in the first 50% of the book and then the second 50% of the book, it turns into like an action movie. And for me personally, it really worked and I had a really good time reading this. So that's why it was a surprise to me because I just had no idea what it was gonna be. And then that shift it has in the middle kind of caught me off guard and in a pleasant way. The other book I'm going to talk about that surprised me in a good way is Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri. I had no expectations for this. I picked it up on a whim uh, because it was available at my library and this is an adult fantasy 
uh, for starting a duology, but it, it counts as kind of a standalone. And this was excellent. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, this woman is forced into an arranged marriage with someone she doesn't know. Um, so her magical powers can be used to better the empire and she doesn't obviously want to be exploited like that. Um, so they end up like overthrowing the empire. It's a desert fantasy. I just thought this was so well crafted for like a slow burn romance as well as the world building for a fantasy story. I really like this. Next is new favorite authors. So I can definitively say Fonda Lee, the author of the Greenbone Saga, is probably a new favorite author because I just absolutely loved her execution of her trilogy. I ended up giving book two and three five stars and book one three stars, uh, but still I could like the trilogy as a whole is so excellent. I think she's a new favorite author. The other two authors that I'm kind of on the fence about, I think I need to read more from them, are uh, Tessa Dare, who is a historical romance writer, um, and who's the other one? Tasha Suri. So I mentioned Empire of Sand. Um, I've read three Tasha Suri books. I gave one five star, I DNF'd one, and I gave one like a 3.5 out of five stars. So like Tasha Suri, I'm like, I think I need to read more works by her to like definitively say if, if she's a favorite. And the same with Tessa Dare. I think I've read five or six Tessa Dare books with like mixed results. So these, those two are the ones I'm like, they have potential to be new favorites. The next two are kind of fun. Um, your newest fictional crushes. And so I was writing these down and I realized there's a theme here. Let's see if you can guess the theme for my fictional crushes. So we have Delilah Green from the rom-com Delilah Green Doesn't Care, who is a photographer, struggling photographer who ends up having a romance with her sister's best friend as she's doing her sister's um, stepsister's wedding photos. Um, and Delilah Green is a tattooed lesbian who's kind of a tough tough girl um and has some emotional baggage so that's one <laughs> and then we have Harold the Ninth from the Locked Tomb trilogy and Harold is a manipulative lesbian necromancer who will stomp on you <laughs> and my last crush is Baru Cormorant who is also a murder lesbian. So <laughs> all of my new crushes this year are lesbians who will just kill you. Uh, and I think that says a lot about me. And so we're gonna move on <laughs> to newest favorite characters in general. Okay, so this is like in general characters that you just adore. And so there is a character named Penelope from Tessa Dare's book, The Wallflower Wager. She's the main female lead in this romance. And she is the sweetest little cinnamon roll I have ever read. But she is also so strong. And the, the solution at the end of the book, I won't give it away, but she comes up with such a brilliant solution at the end of the book, I was so impressed by her wit and her cleverness and her ability to be both like super, super gentle, but also if you cross her, she will F your life up. Like she's got both going on. Um, so Lady Penelope is, I aspire to be like Penelope. She fosters animals. <laughs> she like, helps animals that are you know d disabled and like l has them as pets and just takes care of animals and she's like a little bit of a loner and I don't know I love her. I also really love Thimble from Legends and Lattes um, by Travis Baldry. Thimble is a very quiet soft-spoken mouse rat character who bakes. And he's really sweet and he comes up with the, he gets so excited about baking and it's just, 
he's really charming and I think we can all agree that Thimble is one of the best side characters in Legends and Lantes. And then my other two favorite new characters are actually Kim and Jinan from Winter's Orbit. So I actually read this last year for the first time and reread it this year and this just solidifies how much I love both these main characters in this book. They're just so sweet and they both like Kim has such golden retriever energy and Jinan's kind of like tortured and such a people pleaser but he like comes into his own and I just love both of them. I love the way they get together and solve problems and open up to each other. I just love, I love the two of them. So those are my favorite characters. Now we have to talk about books that made me cry. I cry all the time. So like roll, like flip a coin and the book will probably make, like 50-50 there's a chance a book will make me cry. Like for real. Uh, so I'll go through this rather quickly. Here's what made me cry, sad cry. Um, How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. Um, this is really hard hitting sci-fi plague story, um, which I think is quite obvious as to why I sad cried about this. Um, Eat the Rich by Sarah Gailey. This has some really desperate disabled people in it. And I relate, so I cried. Um, but moving on to things that made me happy cry. We have A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall, uh, Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake, and Work For It by Talia Hibbert. These are all romances that made me cry because of how sweet and beautiful the, the romance was. This one is the most beautiful book you've bought or received this year. I haven't bought that many books, actually. But I, I did have a Target gift card and so I splurged on a really pretty book. So I have this version of the Atlas Six, which is the self-pub version, and I bought this last fall. And this book was recently taken on and traditionally published with uh, Tor, and they rebranded it with this cover. And I normally don't do this, but I really like the new cover and I want to see the differences between the self-pub version and the traditionally published version. Um, so I'm going to be reading um, this version uh, before the sequel comes out, just to kind of see what the difference is. But I think this is really beautiful. It's black and gold and shiny and foiled and I like both covers, but I really wanted to, you know, since I had a gift card, I thought I could treat myself a little bit with a, a seat or a, uh, with a duplicate copy. Next is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And I hate this question. So I just don't like the idea of specific books that I need to read. So I'm going to phrase this in, in a more general way and just talk about my reading goals. Um, I've had, I set up a bunch of reading goals at the beginning of the year and looking at my stats, um, there are some things that I want to focus on for the second half of the year. For example, as of filming this video, I have read 84 books. And of those 84 books, 27 were a, written by a black indigenous or a person of color. And my goal was to read about 50% books written by people of color. So I definitely need to be focusing more time and energy on books written by BIPOC authors. That's for sure. Um, I had a goal to read more queer books and 38 of the 84 books I've read so far have a main character who is queer, a side character who is queer, and or the author themselves is queer. So I count all of those as queer books. So it's kind of a loose definition, but that's about 50%. I could be doing more, um, but queer books are actually hard for me to access. <laughs> so I think I'm doing pretty well, but again, I wanna read more queer books in general. Um, I had a goal to read 10 books with polyamorous rep in them, and I've only read four. So I feel like I'm letting my my poly friends down. Um, I can't rec recommend them as many 
polyamorous books this year, uh, so I need to step up my game there. Um, I have read 28 books with disability representation, which I think is really good. I think I wanted to read like 10 or 15, so I'm really doing well there, but I want to continue reading books with disability representation and different types of disability representation as well. I read 14 books with a trans main character or a trans side character. Um, this was also a goal I wanted to be focusing on trans voices. And so in general, I want to keep focusing on books written by trans authors and, you know, featuring trans characters if possible. The last prompt question is your favorite book community members. Uh, so I am going to be referencing people that I have not referenced um, in my last video. So these are, you know, different recommendations. So I'm not repeating myself as much. My a romance reader who I go to for romance recommendations right now is Mina from Mina Reads. She, she and I, her, our romance tastes align so so much. So whenever she finds a five star read, I immediately pick it up as well. Uh, she has introduced me to so many good romance books. And so just like, if she likes it, I'm gonna try it. Uh, another great YouTuber is Plant Based Bride. And she just started getting into making bush bookish content, but she is traditionally like a bullet journal um, creator, which I like how she combines both like book reviews and journaling about her books that she reads. Um, I like the combination of content. And my other favorite right now is Kayla from Books and Lala. And this is funny because Kayla and I have really different opposite reading tastes. Most of the books she loves, I've hated and vice versa. <laughs> There's not a lot of overlap, overlap in terms of book tastes but I appreciate Kayla so much for her creativity and her content is so good. And it's, I aspire to be as creative and to be as well thought out and well edited and produced. Like I can just tell the level of craft that has gone into the video making aspect of her videos and I just really appreciate her for that. Those were the 14 questions. <laughs> I hope I was brief. Editing Hannah will have to see and we have the sun. So I, I think it is time to say goodbye. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video and I will see you in another one very soon. Bye.